the title of the panel, as I'm sure you've probably seen, is From Insights to Impact. And the main focus of the whole conversation, or at least the way that I'm going to phrase it, is all around, well, how do we actually take these insights and actually drive better decision making? Helping people make choices that they'd probably be making even if they didn't have any data, but help them make it better by providing them with evidence. Hey everyone. Hi Elite Panel, how are you doing today? Uh, thank you for joining us. So the panelists that we have here today, so you just heard Jeremy Shapiro speaking. We also have Gishan Nisanka, who is at the Global P Analytics team for EY. We have Madhura Chakrabarti, from, who is the Global Head of People Analytics at Syngenta. And we have Sarah Anderson, a Principal People Scientist, uh, from today's track sponsor, Sage, and she works in the Sage AI Labs. So thank you guys for, uh, for joining us. We're very grateful to have you here. And so when we were prepping for the session, I was like, well, what is the most fun thing to start with? And if I'm honest with you, I was like, well, the fun thing that I think the most things, fun thing to start with is to say, well, what is it like? there must be something that you guys do, which is fun and exciting. You know, a place where not only do you get to do interesting analytics, but you get to have an impact and you can look back and say, hey, look what I've achieved. So I thought the first question we might ask you all is, well, what is your favorite type of HR, HR question to answer and why? Uh, I'm just going to pick from the order that you're in my Zoom and Madura, you're the, you're the next one across from my screen. Would you mind? Um, sure. Okay, thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Um, this is Madura. Uh, it's no, no need for introduction as Nigel has already gone through that. So to answer the question, um, again, I would say two things. One is, and there may be a recency bias because we have done so much of it over the last la uh, year through the pandemic is employee listening. Um, so it really, I, I find it amusing when people start talking. I think people are generally feeling better now. And it's so much of it is anecdotal based on the last conversation you had or the last meeting that you were in or literally coming out of, a, of, of the first in-person meeting that you had one and a half years later. So you start saying this, but I'm always amazed at the lack of data and how people are comfortable just saying how what they're feeling. So if we, our team is able to add numbers to that conversation, I feel like we have really achieved a lot. And we did that throughout last year where we said, yes, a lot of people want to come back, but keep in mind that consistently across all our listening exercises, seven, 60 to 70% of our employees always said they want a hybrid model. So this is not a blanket policy that we can come up with where we say everybody goes offside because we think people enjoy that. So uh, and moment you start putting numbers, you see that gets picked up and, and our CHRO and sometimes our CEO always uses those numbers coming up from the listening exercises. So I think it's fun, but it's also very impactful and very satisfying. The second type is whenever we are able to answer a, a business question. So uh, a year back around, we did some um, uh, work around predicting who are our best sales performers and some of the findings we had our sales strategy team basically came and told us that this is the best hr involvement we have had and we never knew hr could help us with that so so those are the most impactful slash fun um yeah. exercises that we have had so i'm sure yeah. others have other great examples too yeah no that was great and uh i say i mean, i I, I think I can pick up on your energy. It's like that was actually an exciting project to deliver. You know, somebody took a different action and even better, it helped employees, you know, to get through the pandemic. Uh, Gishan, what about you? What, uh, what's your favorite type of, uh, you know, question to answer and, the, and, and why? Uh, pick one of the latest ones. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, nice uh, having you all here and also seeing everyone, uh, the panel and, and uh, uh, how to everyone uh, listening. So one of the key ones at the moment is is a great re resignation, right? So everybody is, is kind of panicking and also kind of trying to find ways to, to retain people. So one of the things that we recently designed is uh, we call it EPP, Exit uh, Probability Profiler, sort of how to kind of profile how, why people leave, 
the organization uh, and why people sometimes stay with the organization, right? So trying to look at uh, the drivers of, of leaving and drivers of, of staying and also even project, you know, how many kind of uh, possible or probable exits uh, within, uh, within any given business area that is likely to happen. So that has been taken a storm, if I be honest, uh, uh, every leader, every service line leader, every country or region uh, kind of, you know, going far beyond, uh, I think HR, uh, it has created so much impact uh, in business because they could really uh, to look at, uh, uh, you know, the kind of uh, the impact it's having, uh, you know, the, the data that uh, sometimes you don't have a tangible information to, uh, to make a decision. So I think it has been a quite hot topic uh, and a really good project for us, uh, uh, for people analytics team. You want me asking, because I think in Madura's case study, uh, well, example, she was providing answers to senior business people, it sounded like. Uh, in in your example, Gishan, you know, uh, who are you answering these questions for? Like, who are you providing the value to? Well, we're looking for business leaders. So if you look at, uh, in a consulting business, we have service line leaders um, and CEOs and uh, sometimes people sponsors. Uh, which is uh, kind of uh, uh, going beyond the HR business partners and, and typical yeah. other people you would normally work with. So it's kind of, they're really taking ownership and uh, we do kind of update it uh, uh, quarterly and it's people waiting for the next quarter, right? Can, can you give us and, and, you know, like so much energy, so much interest, uh, not mm -hmm. just from talent uh, across business. Yeah, thank you. And Sarah, what about you? What's your favorite type of uh, HR question to answer? Oh, it's it's so hard to <laughs> it's so hard to choose. Um, a, a couple of things that I I've been really excited around lately. Um, one is whenever you can really connect the dots between um, an HR HR problem, HR data, and really like business data, uh, and so you can really start to link the what's going on with your people data, the insights you have there, and how it's actually driving a concrete business metric that the business cares about. Um, it's so much more powerful when you can go to a business leader and say, oh, we have a problem with turnover, and because of that problem with turnover, we're gonna have to spend this much more money to bring new people on, and you're probably gonna actually miss your sales goals because we're losing these salespeople. And really being able to translate, um, you know, some of the things we work with on a daily, day, daily basis in, um, you know, HR and people analytics into actual business numbers, I think can be really, really powerful in those conversations. Um, and then the, the second one is, because I'm going to throw in two, um, is, is really the opportunities for machine learning um, within the, the um, people analytics space uh, that have emerged recently. Some of the projects we're working on are really taking the power of machine learning and making it available to smaller and mid-sized companies. Um, who yeah. haven't had the opportunity to really invest in those types of things in their own businesses because they don't have enough data. They can't hire, you know, a team of data scientists or anything like that. And so really empowering them with the power of, of data across companies um, is an area I'm really, really excited about. Awesome. And Jeremy, would you like to add one? Yeah, yeah. I love this. I love these stories. These are, these are great um, too. Uh, so one thing that we did recently um, was analytical research on the data science and analytical talent across the entire company um, too. And it, so it, it, was, it was an energizing project for a lot of the team because one, it was helping folks that they kind of felt were their kind of kindred, right? Kindred spirits um, too. But it also helped to outline some of the changes that, that occur so quickly inside of organizations. So just as an example, I love picking on the, um, the job title of data engineer because the, uh, there are so many changes that occur in, um, in data science today that the base of reference of the, the, the title data engineer has changed in the past 12 months. Now there's actually flavors of data engineers and 12 months ago that was less so. It happens to be true of data science that happened a few years prior to that as well. All of these terms keep on morphing. So where we can create better learning pathways or be better networking opportunities, there happen to be some ONA, uh, organizational network analysis in this as well. You can really get a feel for how some of these emerging functions inside of, inside of uh, organizations are operating and how we can make them better. I think that was a, a nice kind of small project, um, but uh, had some, has a, some nice pieces around it. Yeah. No, that's great. And uh... I mean, I always have this theory that, you know, um, 
the great thing about people analytics people is that when you ask them about what gets them excited, yes, they get excited about number crunching, but they get excited even more about impact. You know, somebody taking the numbers that we generate and doing something with it. And we've heard just off the, the bat there, but I expected four and I got eight interesting stories. I think it was or seven interesting stories. And I suppose to our panelists who are thankfully, thank you for adding questions, but just imagine there's somebody in your organization who wants, who's getting excited to answer these type of questions for you if you just ask them. Now, I'm gonna try and weave in some of the questions that are coming from the audience into what the panel and I were thinking we'd like to share with you. I think maybe I'll go back and I'll stick with the, the pre-prepared question just to get us started, which is, well, as people analytics experts, and we'll ask you in a different order this time so that it's uh, that, to, to keep you on your toes. Um, you know, I think, you know, it's one thing when we're talking in people analytics rooms and we're talking to the converted. Where actually, I think in this particular room, we have lots of general HR people, HR professionals who want to make better choices, want to be more data driven. So if you're reflecting maybe on some of those things that you just said, what would you think be the secret ingredient that you would like to communicate about, well, how do you actually have an impact with analytics? Or maybe flip it on its head. What's something which goes wrong? It's a pitfall and you'd like to communicate and say, well, this is what we could do better. Uh, I'm gonna round when we pick this time. Gishan, you're not on mute. So uh, you might've um, self-selected yourself there. What do you think? What's your secret ingredient or the thing you're always avoiding? Well, I think the secret, uh, as Jeremy said before, is a relationship. Right, so if you have good relationship, uh, either way, it just works both ways. So my role in, in my uh, EY is, is business partnering, analytics business partnering. So making sure, uh, taking all the things, you know, the all wonderful products and, and services or solutions we, we design and build globally, taking it to regions, make sure people are actually using them and utilize them to make better decisions. But what, what you find, like as a team, uh, uh, we probably can't reach out to 300,000 people, over 1,000 uh, HR business partners and, and that kind of a scale. So uh, what uh, I would say, you're probably working, probably not that massive organization, but uh, the capabilities of uh, people analytics team and, and their time probably limited, right? So sometimes don't wait uh, till they come to you, right? So to the other, right? Reach out to them uh, and ask them and challenge them, right? We always like a challenge, right? We're analytics, pe analytics mm -hmm. people, right? Ask hard questions and we'll go and find solutions. Mm -hmm. So I think the key for me is uh, don't wait, uh, reach out uh, and also don't be scared, right? If you are, is it not something you are familiar with? It's a territory. They jump in. So analytics is, I don't think it's no longer as a specialized thing. So mm. It's something that we need to have every day. We've seen that uh, uh, over the pandemic, most of the decisions, at least in the UK, uh, the decisions uh, whether to lock down or not was was decided based on, on science, data science. So it's a way of, of life, I believe, uh, you know, going forward. So get familiar with it and reach out and help, ask for help. Mm. So that's my, my recommendation. What do you think, Madura? Like, uh, does that sound? Ah, you unmuted yourself. <laughs> I really, really like that point, Kisha made. I think the other um, point I would like to reiterate here is, uh, you know, we have all these models of level one, two, three, four, or you know, here's a spectrum of how you start analytics and how you end. Um, but in reality, the more and more as a practitioner, I've experienced this world uh, of people analytics, it's never a linear journey. Um, and we have to be okay with this non-linearity, so to say, because on one hand, you are sometimes struggling with basic infrastructure issues, trying to get the right systems in place, um, sometimes trying to teach senior stakeholders how to read a dashboard. On, Literally the next day, there may be an opportunity where you can pitch an idea for ONA. And that's what happened with our team where that got accepted by a business leader. So we then went ahead and did a pilot ONA study with one of our biggest business units. So on, so those literally are two ends of the spectrum, but they can go hand in hand. So don't be... Um, don't be too constrained in thinking that, oh, we are actually in level two. So let's just mm -hmm. gradually move to level four in two years time you can actually do level four work um, even when you are in level two. So don't, don't be constrained in that linear model when we are actually practicing people analytics. Those models are great. I'm a big fan of those, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. But in reality, mm -hmm. you have to get out of those, that thinking. Cool. 
And Sarah, what about you? What if uh, maybe from you know an advanced AI perspective, because I guess you know that's that's your background. What's your secret in ingredient for having an impact? You know, I think it really all comes down to to really knowing knowing um, your your audience. I'm going to say your customers is like people in the business, right? Are often are are the customers of you know your HR business partners, and and really understanding their needs and what it is that that they need from you. Um, what are their big problems that they need data to help answer? Um, and then that's not just a, a one off process. It's an iterative process. Um, so you, you have those conversations, you understand their needs, you understand your problems, you go see what you can find to help solve those. And then you come back and say, does this help? Is this helping you make decisions? Uh, is this helping further uh, your your um, business priorities? And if it's not, then you go back to the dragon gourd and you try, try something else uh, until you're really able to make an impact. Yeah, uh, a question came, came through a bit earlier. Um, I'll throw it open to everyone because I think you'll all have a view. Um, I mean, reflecting, well, the question is really, how do we, I'll, I'll read it out directly because it's easier. How do we use analytics to help employees to make better decisions? I guess, Gishan, you referenced, you know, you can't speak to 300,000 people. Um, I guess you're all from quite large organizations who have large customers. What do you think about the answer to that? I think that's the ultimate goal, right? Uh, so we, we start with the leaders, then you go to managers, then you try to you know get to the leaders. So we are going through a huge transformation process, right? So we deploying new systems and uh, you know whole new infrastructure. Uh, we are also I'm also part of a wider digital talent or digital HR team in Inibai. So it's all about digital experience, right? So end of the day, right? We pretty much talk to a laptop now, uh, you know, as we work, right? You spend probably, I don't know, on average, uh, there was a study done, right? You, you, your screen time is more than any other time that you would spend. So if you can, like you look at it, uh, like Microsoft Viva and, you know, ONA, this is all you know, pushing you daily saying, you know, these are the meetings, get ready, you know, likewise. But the value is really comes in if you can combine some of the, you know, the operational uh, and uh, experiential data that we have with the organization and telling me how effective uh, I could be. Mm. Right. So this recent study we did uh, on learning space, but we found that uh, uh, the kind of doing uh, you know control uh, uh, testing, but the people who who learn uh, more than X amount of uh, of time, like to do self study, not compliance, right? Mm. Of course, you have to do a lot of compliance, but uh, are more likely to be a high performer, are more likely to be engaged, are more likely to be uh, get, even get promoted, right? So mm -hmm. imagine if you know that, right, you're more likely to be, you know, learning than not, you know, putting it to a side. So that's a really great insight. I think that's uh, mm -hmm. uh, the our aim of what we are looking at, you know, providing the insights to our own employees so that could, could be better um, client serving or could be, you know, improving, the, you know, your own performance, you know, likewise. Uh, but of course, I would say it's, it's ambition. That's something that we're working towards. It's not something we have it in place. Yeah. Jeremy, I think you were well, about to say something. Well, building on Gishan's point there, um, there's been a revolution in personal analytics over the past uh, uh, 12 to, to 18 months. So if you're a Google user or if you're a Microsoft user, um, I'll, I'll use the Microsoft example, the My Analytics product allows me as a, as an, as a contributor to understand what's going on with my own personal network, what's going on with my own personal time, and even gives you tools to open up a, a, a deep work time where, where you need to as well to integrate it together. There's a, there's a, a far up ramp on, where, on what this work can do, but um, I do think that it, part, part of the analytics function is to champion the tools that, uh, that all employees can uh, can use as, as well. And so if 100% of your employees are looking at their networks and thinking about how they're spending their time um, too, you can, you can create enormous positive leverage by empowering employees, letting them see their own networks, letting them see their own, mm -hmm. their own work and, and going from there. I think it's very energizing. Letting them know what's in it for them almost, right? Like uh, 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 Madura, I guess maybe a similar question, but I suppose you leveraging your original story Using analytics, not just help employees, but also executives. Like, how did you, how did you do that? Um, or how yeah, do you I think 
uh, it, it goes back to you know what problem you're trying to solve, right? So this particular sales strategy analysis that we did, it yes, it had business uh, impact or business relevance, but it was also catering to a specific team within the company, right? Uh, or, or a sub sub unit. So there's always this balance of, do you want to address the masses and upskill the masses, or do you really want to solve a particular problem that helps a particular organization? Um, and sometimes to drive really good impact, it's the latter. You have to focus in on a very specific problem and help a very specific team walk through that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's the challenge we have, uh, and sometimes you have to choose one or the other. Um, and sorry, what what was the other question that you had? I actually think you managed to answer both questions with the, okay. <laughs> with the one mm -hmm. answer. Um, I I guess maybe in fact yeah, let's because there was the one other question we wanted to give you all the opportunity to say. So, as advocates for data driven HR and people analytics. So if we could give in one sentence some advice to our HR audience who are listening to us right now to say, well, if you take away one thing from this session, it can be anything you want. It could be about adopting data-driven HR. It could be about using AI. It could be about, you know, engaging with your people, listening, anything you want. What would that one sentence be? Um, I let's do a different order, shall we? Uh, let's Sarah, would you like to like to go first this time? Sure, one sentence, huh? Uh, <laughs> one sentence, yeah. That's a challenge. I think I already used my one sentence, just saying one <laughs> sentence. Uh, so the the way that I like to talk about it is that if you looked at two companies and you considered that one company really knows their people, they know uh, why they're joining the organization, uh, the culture, the engagement, um, how to um, really get the most out of their people, how to retain them. And there's a competitor that doesn't know any of that. Which of these companies do we think is going to be successful in the long run? Knowing your people, using people analytics effectively, data-driven decisions, it's a competitive advantage for organizations and companies that don't invest in that are going to find them at themselves at a huge disadvantage as these continue to proliferate across the across different companies. Awesome. Great sentence. Not quite one sentence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, good set of sentences. Um, Maduri, you're unmuted. Would you like to answer? Sure. I think uh, uh, my, my one advice would be upskill the entire HR population. If you have limited budget, spend it on upskilling the, the mass, the, the critical mass here, because the exponential impact that will have can never be compared with what the single analytics team can do. And again, I'm not talking about 200, 500 people analytics team. These are mostly seven to 10 to 15 people teams that we have. Um, it's never comparable uh, when you start upskilling the masses and seeing what impact they have when they dry, try to drive data-driven decisions within their network. So invest in, in the entire HR function. Great one. Uh, Gisham, would you like to go next? Yeah, it's, just, it's a simple one for me. I think uh, uh, this is the, the kind of team in, in our organization in EY is, is probably bigger the question, better the answer. So ask big questions, right? So the analytics is all about finding answers, right? So if you don't know something, reach out and ask that question, right? So we should be able to find out right why people leave right it's a black box right can you open it up so ask better questions or bigger questions so you'll find better answers ask bigger or better questions or both bigger and better questions <laughs> and jeremy would you like to sorry and jeremy would you like to finish this off so i gave me the challenge of trying to use the fewest words possible too use data Provide context. More That's it. powerful words to finish on. <laughs> cool. Well, that was great. If I'm going to summarize those last four points, then we have people analytics, it's going to give you a business advantage. We have upskill HR. We have ask bigger and better questions. And we have, oh, damn it, I didn't write, use data. What was the last bit about context, Jeremy? Provide context. Provide context. Awesome. Now, actually, I'm reliably told that that's the, the last minute we had for the panel. 
So I guess all that's left for me to do is firstly say thank you to our panelists for joining us today. Thank you, Jeremy, Madura, Gishan, and Sarah. Um, it felt short, but I feel like we delivered a lot of value and there were a lot of interesting stories that I hope people took away in their notes. Uh, I'll also say thank you to Mihaly, Kathleen and the HR Congress team for inviting us here. Thank you to everybody who's attending. And of course, I guess, thank you for Sage, to Sage for sponsoring the track. Nobody asked me to say that, but I'm gonna say that anyway. Thank you Sage for doing that. Uh, just so you remember, last bit, there is the lounge discussion. If anyone wants to go and click on the little lounge thing and have an open, unmoderated chat, there's probably people hanging out there right now. Uh, and otherwise, I'll say thank you, good morning, good afternoon, and please hang around because we're about to see uh, our sages. Uh, we're about to see a, our sponsor, Sage, present their PeopleNetic solution on creating a tailored dashboard. So please do hold on for that. Otherwise, thank you, everyone, again. And sure. Thanks. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Yeah.